Hey guys, so as most of you know I'm always looking for ways to use machines to automate processes for gold recovery uh, rather than just doing things the uh, long way by hand and um, I've one of the one of the remaining bits that I have not yet automated very well is the depopulation of PCB so so get the chips off PCBs uh, for gold recovery and yeah so I've, I've got a little bit of a prototype up and running here and I thought um, might be of some interest to uh, some of you guys that uh, do a bit of this stuff and um, yeah might might give you some ideas or, or might uh, show you that it can be done relatively easily so I'll just um, quickly go through and show you all the bits of this although it, it is fairly straightforward just just how I assembled it and then what we'll do is I'll get it all started up for you and um, just show it to you working okay let me uh, just get this camera off the tripod and um, I'll show you all the individual bits okay so the heart of the trommel depopulator as we'll call it from now on thanks to Ben at work for giving me the name is the uh, the rotary drum we've got in there and what you'll notice is all of that will remove fairly easily and all I've done here is I've used an old paint can not sure what the size is but it's one that obviously fits uh, inside an old gas cylinder that's been cut open relatively easily the gas cylinder serves as my oven so to speak so that just basically traps keeps the heat and then keeps the heat circulating in there uh, just to make the whole thing a little bit more efficient then I've used a little bit of M8 uh, threaded rod that goes all the way through that's just so both sides are supported and um, I've just basically kind of got it uh, contained at the far side so that when you re rotate this uh, counterclockwise as viewed from this side the thread does not tend to make the uh, does not tend to make the ferret rod want to jump out of the little kind of notch that I've cut on the bottom of the cylinder there. The way that I load this, so this is mostly for depopulating RAM at this at this stage, so fairly small PCBs, but there's no reason why this concept couldn't be scaled up uh, if you're interested in doing larger PCBs. So um, the way to, to basically load it up is, it's a bit difficult with one hand, but you just open the lid of the paint can because the Oops, just like that. The threaded rod goes uh, through the lid and I've just got a little brass, uh, like a little brass threaded bush um, on the lid to, to support that side and obviously this side the threaded rod is actually attached on both sides with nuts and washers so that when you turn the rod the drum will turn with the rod. The rotation comes from a, a very simple, so I've just got a uh, a bolt joined to the rod there it's got a nice hexagonal head and then I've just 3d printed a little uh, uh, plastic um, adapter to go from the geared motor to the to the um, to just be able to drive that the the way that it's driven um, can be pretty generic it's just basically going to depend on what you can buy or what you have sitting in your uh, junk pile at home um, you might even be able to find something out of an appliance that will turn slow enough for this to work and then I'm just I'm just running that from my variable power supply because that allows me to change the speed of the motor by just changing the voltage on it. The um, one of the, the the important parts of the system obviously is where the heat comes from, and it's also one of the most difficult parts. It would be nice to have some kind of electric heating system and fan blower, but that's not really something I've got sitting around at the moment. But I do have this. Um, it's a, a homemade DIY um, LPG or propane furnace blower, furnace gas torch. I'm not really sure what the right term for it is, but it's just something I made myself. So it's just some bits of, um, I've got a, a little brass nozzle in the back here that I got out of an old welding machine. And I've just got a, bit, a few bits of pipe and that's just a, uh, like a pipe expander or a pipe joint, an expanding joint. And what I figured the the big trick to making this work there there are a whole bunch of videos on YouTube that explain how to get this set up working but um, I found having uh, blockers on the end that are adjustable so I can actually open and close uh, undo the screw and then open and close these blockers to control the airflow that is actually the key to making this type of setup work 
and then unsurprisingly this way you, you just go back to a uh, gas cylinder. I've got a fancy adjustable regulator here but you can really just use the one from a barbecue that would work fine. So that's the basic system. Let me load some RAM into the trommel there and get the whole thing up and running and then just show it to you guys running and then I'll um, probably turn off for a little bit because it takes takes a few minutes but I'll, I'll time it and just let you know from completely cold up until you know I think all the all the boards are depopulated how long that's going to take. So the boards we're going to depopulate is the dog. The boards we're going to depopulate are um, half a kilogram so that's roughly one pound of just RAM boards. So these are all RAM boards with BGA chips like those and they have all had the the gold fingers cut off already. The reason I cut the gold fingers off first is um, because I process them as relatively clean gold. I try not to have any solder uh, in the uh, kind of solder in the mixture so if you lift them with the gold fingers on and you and you depopulated the chips first using something like this you're bound to get a few bits of solder on your um, kind of sticking to your gold so I prefer to cut it all first okay let me get this uh, set up I'll quickly load the RAM into there and then I'll uh, show it to you guys running okay guys so here we have the trommel running with the half kilogram of uh, RAM in there and you can pretty much see the type of speed that I've got. That's about as low as I can run that particular motor I have while still having enough torque to uh, turn the drum easily. So I think next step is uh, we'll just get the gas going and I'll start the stopwatch. Just so we see how long this takes for uh, half a kilogram. Okay, and stopwatch starting now. So we'll just see how this goes. Um, yeah, as I said before, one of the hardest parts of this type of setup is actually getting the, the gas blower or the, the heat source to work properly. But if you make it with adjustable air, then uh, that makes things a bit better. Okay, so it's probably going to be relatively boring to just watch this. So I'll stop here and I'll um, cut back in when I think we've got most of the chips depopulated. Okay, so at exactly 2 minutes and 31 seconds, we have now got some ICs falling out the bottom. I think you guys should be able to see, if you look uh, underneath inside the drum, you should be able to see the ICs starting to uh, fall off. So, 2.5 minutes is not too bad as a, as a preheat. Um, I'll come back when I think all of the ice, all of the ICs have been depopulated. Okay, so not too exciting. After three and a half minutes or so, all of the ICs are depopulated. As you can see there, the PCBs aren't really burned at all, and there is hardly any, like absolutely hardly any smoke or um, fumes coming off of the setup. I still am running, oops, I am still running with the uh, door open obviously right behind and I would probably recommend that you do this outside or with excellent ventilation but yeah looking pretty good so I'll just go and um, turn it off and basically uh, take the boards out, inspect the boards and you know anything that might have one or two chips still remaining would go back in but I'll just turn that off and it's probably stopped in a pretty bad location but you guys should be able to see if I zoom in a bit that the boards appear to have been completely depopulated. I'll just go rotate that a little bit. Oops. There we go. You can see actually right in there there's one big BGA chip. Um, oops, the one big BGA chip you can see there in the middle actually comes from uh, some ECC server RAM and some of them use the, the little small chips that fell down the bottom for, uh, for the memory but then they've got the, the controller chip that's that big one that's sitting in the middle that is actually a flip chip type chip so it's completely worthless for gold recovery anyway. But um, yeah, you can see I've got a, a decent... Oops, I've got, you know, as many chips down the bottom as you would expect. And, you know, from the half kilo of RAM. Uh, yeah, so, looking very good. 
uh, as always so this this obviously is just the the first rough prototype but I'm pretty much sold now on this concept so I think what I'll probably be doing next is I will improve the the drum cage type system I'll, I'll probably um, just make something a bit more solid and a bit more permanent uh, just out of some welded steel plates and um, yeah and then obviously just mount the whole mount the whole oven side on on a, a type of frame that also houses the the motor side so it all mates up a little bit better but i think this concept is a winner i've never depopulated so much ram so quickly so yeah about three and a half minutes uh, from completely cold and um, this whole part here is still completely cold to the touch so um so yeah, no, absolute winner. So uh, please feel free to let me know if you guys have any ideas uh, for improvements here. Um, otherwise, um, good luck and be safe and enjoy the gold recovery.